I'm attempting to troubleshoot the vertical linearity issue with this set. I checked the DC voltages on the vertical output tube and they seemed okay. A little high on uh, pins 3 and 4. I'm getting closer to 300 rather than 280, but I really don't think that's an issue. Well, what I'm looking at now is the input to the vertical output tube. That would be pin 5 here, so your vertical oscillator, and then the vertical output tube. So, that, to me, looks like we got a little bit of a linearity issue there. That should be a nice straight sawtooth. This paper up here. And it's got a bit of curve to it. So, that's not good, I would think. So, I'm going to focus on this. I did swap that out with one other tube, um, but uh, I'll try yet another tube and I will double check those parts as well. So I saw some of your comments, um, one that maybe the vertical uh, output transformer or blocking oscillator transformer have been replaced. That's the output transformer, I'm pretty darn sure that's original. It looks. Like it hasn't been tinkered with, plus it's got the Y stamp. Every major part on this set, including the picture tube, has a Y stamped on it. I believe they did that to designate the revision so they didn't mix up parts between sets. So that's probably original and a vertical blocking oscillator transformer. I can't really tell, but it's probably the original. So there's the oscillator. So, um, well, we got some mica caps there, although that, uh, that half of it with these two mica caps, that's actually for the horizontal oscillator. So I don't think that's an issue, but we do have two mica caps up here in a vertical circuit. Those could be problematic. I was actually a little surprised to see those. Uh, those are the 2.0047 microfarad. Whereas the point zero zero five and the point zero zero two are film, or while well, originally paper caps, I replaced them with film. I'm not sure why those other two would be mica. Uh, that would be the vertical integrator, and if you know, I don't know why they would mix different types of caps in the same circuit. But uh, actually, something worth checking. And the resistors. Now, I definitely checked the eight point twos, and they were okay. And I'm pretty sure I checked the one point two. Well, I can recheck that. I think that's all there is to it. Well, and the uh, the vertical hold control there. Oh, and I guess these other parts here too, the 270K and so on. Those. So we got some in here. And let's check these two. It's the horizontal hold and vertical hold controls. I replaced one of those resistors, and the others checked out okay at the time. But I can check them again. I tried a couple different 6SN7s, no change, checked all the resistors again, they're within about 5%, and I'm now checking the Mikey caps, I disconnected one end of each, so they're out of the circuit, and they're just fine. Capacitance is right about 4700, and there's no leakage. So, <laughs> um, I'm going to go back to checking the voltages and waveforms, see if I can figure anything out. Well, the voltages... On a vertical oscillator, look okay. I checked the resistance in the pot, they're okay. So, uh, I guess there's a remote possibility that that's just as good as it's going to get, because it's not horrible. Not by any means, not since I replaced uh, the cathode uh, bypass resistor here. So, uh, in the meantime, I am moving on to doing an alignment, so at least I've <laughs> accomplished something and get some better sound out of this set. So. Same procedure you've seen me do a bunch of times before. Lift the shield up on the mixer oscillator tube and inject your signal here. And I got a terminating resistor on that. Got a minus four and a half volt DC bias to knock out the AGC bus. It's, I'm using my VA62, which has a built in DC power supply just for that purpose. Four and a half volts. And I am using the programmable IF, and this unit has been modified so we can go lower than 35 megahertz. This set uses 21.25 for the 
audio carrier. So that is what I am working on right now. I've already done step one, which is the trap. I adjust it for minimum. It was off a little bit. And now I'm doing A2, A3, A4 for a maximum, which are the IF coils I was just uh, swooning around with by ear before. So let's see, you do A2 first, and A2 is the top side of this guy. So I was doing it backwards before. <laughs> I did it uh, before I did the, the bottom of this uh, can, then I went back and did this can. Apparently you're supposed to do this one first. So, oh well, uh, let's see. And I've adjusted my signal, so I've got about one volt on my meter, and oh yeah, that was off. <laughs> that was off big time. Now what you're supposed to do is, is you tweak these and they get more and more uh, locked in. You want to keep decreasing your input signal. Otherwise you overload things and you get misleading readings. So somebody left me a comment asking how critical doing an alignment is and could people tell the difference. Visually, probably not. Audio, absolutely. In a set like this with a split carrier, or split IF, separate IF just for the sound, very narrow bandwidth on this. you got to tune it. Uh, otherwise, you lose a lot of gain and you lose a lot of quality. All right, now we do the bottom. That one was that one was dead on. Right where it was. Right on the bottom of this guy. That was off a little bit, but not much. And we just this that one was off. I'm gonna go back and do this one again. Get the stupid tool on there. Alright, so, simple enough, our long last step is to do the ratio detector. Got to rearrange my connections a bit. Okay, ratio detector, I have tweaked my meters, so when it's grounded, the needle's dead center. So, it's just barely off. Again, I, I tweaked this by year, so I guess I did a pretty good job. So when you tweak this coil, it should swing to either side of the center point. And it certainly does. And right Back on. That's touchy. Got the meter on the most sensitive scale. Now if I dial this in to say 20, say 0, the needle swings to one side, and 2150, I run a 2125 back in the center, and then 2150 it swings the other way. Well, it's not that symmetrical, so 2150, we're way over here, and 2100, not quite so much, but, eh, that's probably all right. I could hook up a sweep generator if I really wanted to double check that. Uh, but uh, what I'm going to do now is since I got all the stuff it up, I'm going to just blow through the video portion, which is the stuff here. You just dial in these frequencies 25.3, 23.5, 22.0, 22.3, and you just peek into these coils for a maximum. It's what they call a stagger tuned IF. Each stage is tuned to a slightly different frequency, and you add up all the responses, and you get a nice wide plateau, well sort of more like a double humped response, something like that. Alright, so I'm doing that first video coil now, 25.3, and I thought I had my connections wrong at first because I had to really crank up the RF generator to get any reading. I got it on the highest attenuator setting, turned up almost all the way to get my meter deflection, that's about one volt. And uh, I should have, be able to put in a much, much lower signal. So, 
I then thought, well, I guess my connections must be right, or probably right, so how about I tweak the coil a little bit and check this out. That was way off. I just did like three full rotations, and now the meter's finally off scale. Turn the uh, output of the RF generator down. And, uh, pick up my tool, which I dropped, and go back down. So what I'm doing is, is these slugs poke up through the top of the chassis. And, uh, there's a diagram. And the service info shows you which ones to peak. So man, I'm just cranking and cranking this thing. And I gotta keep gotta keep lowering the output of my generator. So man, that thing was way off. Now that is circuit inside this box. And remember I found some 1K resistors that were really off, and those provide the plate supply and biasing for the IF stages. So I suppose one possibility is maybe even back when this thing was built, the resistors were way off and they uh, aligned it with the bias points being screwy. Anyways, there, that seems to be locked in now. So I move on to the next 23.5. So on through the various frequencies until I get them all done. I see that's pegged way off the meter. That's, that's more like it should be. Shouldn't need to put much signal uh, in at all to get full scale, especially when you're in the lowest range on your VTVM. I finished going through the rest of the video IF coils, and several others were off considerably as well, so now I'm really curious to see what impact it's going to have. But before I do that, hooked up a sleep generator so I could double check the FM sound alignment. Here is my S curve, and it's pretty good. There's a crossover, 2125, and it's pretty symmetrical on either side of that, so I think that is just fine. I wish I had done this bandwidth test before I did the alignment, but I thought I would just be aligning the sign that, that the video would be off so much because it looked pretty good before. Remember where I pointed out those chroma dots? Well, here's the bandwidth test, and here would be the frequency where you get that color information, so from here up. So from here down, it's it's rock solid. It looks great. Up here, you can kind of still see stripes going up into here, which means it's got an excellent bandwidth. Most sets uh, crap out above here. Uh, so yeah, that, that's great. And uh, let's see, that sound. Alright, none of my sets sound particularly good when I use the built-in audio in this for whatever reason. This thing might not be working 100%, but, uh, so, uh, just from my experience of knowing my quirky test equipment, that's, that's, uh, promising. And let's see, I'll flip over. Well, that sounds good, even though I have no antenna hooked up. Uh, I'm going to feed in uh, actual broadcast signal. Well, the sound is certainly better, and the picture looks really, really sharp. Fantastic sound, though. Alright, so I will tinker around with that vertical linearity a little bit more, but otherwise I'd say the set is done.
Oh, no, I shouldn't say that. Uh, the horizontal linearity was off a little bit, too. And there's also a faint vertical line on the left side uh, here. I think both of those will be taken care of by adjusting the horizontal drive. 